speech here today. I asked some of the universities to submit for me some researches about the latest rates and the possible solutions. So it's all scientifically uh, discussed and submitted. Here in America and the rest of the world, we are really working hard to find solution, either in cooperation between governments and grassroots and nations or with, uh, scientifically, academically, universities are sharing, participating all possibilities to solve the issue, to solve the crisis. The solution for unemployment is, of course, to create new jobs. As everybody knows, we need to create new jobs opportunities. The number of jobs that need to be created depends on the unemployment rate and the number of people entering the labor force in search of work. The government should use two policies here to tackle the unemployment. And this is a research result from Massachusetts University here in Boston, United States of America. It came with two mo most important policies to tackle the unemployment to solve it. The government really need to address it. The first policy is the monetary policy. And the second one is fiscal policy. Expansionary monetary policy increases the money supply and it has more immediate effects, stimulates demand production and ultimately employment. This is normally managed by central bank. Expansionary fiscal policies include government spending and tax cuts. This will be through take more time to have an impact, have a greater impact on consumerism so they are more effective as economic stimulating. The most cost effective solutions are fiscal, building mass transit, granting unemployment benefits, funding the educational sector, and payroll tax cuts allow consumers to gain more income which they spend to spur demand. This conference came today with many goals. The most important of which is the study of globalization and its economic sense to address economic challenges and global financial issues and how to develop the international economy and open trade relation between countries, which is gonna be one of the most important factors and elements here. And it's gonna be the basis of the comprehensive development process for societies and countries as it will open a lot of job opportunities and reduce unemployment rates. So this is one of the most important approaches we need to all the countries, diplomacies, and they have to make meetings on how to strengthen the mutual trade relations. This will make more opportunity to create more projects, economic projects, which will be reflected in opening more unemployment, uh, more job opportunities and reduce unemployment rates. Here today, I want to thank all of you, to thank the work team who work really hard to organize this conference, all the organizations, everybody here, and in front of the scene and behind the scene, the advisors, committees, for their big efforts and such a great work to make this conference happening. The American International Education Federation and the rest of the organizations here with us today. Thank you so much for all this effort. And we're looking forward for everybody who's attending this conference and whoever will be looking and watching our conference today to join our hands, to put hands together and start working for all levels from government all the way to individuals, organizations, societies, institutional societies, organization, everybody. We really looking, we are looking forward to start working together to reduce the unemployment rates and putting more strategies and approach and start working on that as soon as possible. Thank you so much for your participation. And I wish you a very, very good and successful conference results after this conference. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you so much for the wonderful opening. As the president of this conference, 
really you have motivated us a lot regarding two things the first one is about the crisis currently india is facing the second one is unemployment that devastated all the world these two things very important really you have touched everyone of us thank you so much for your wonderful motivating words now i would like to thank uh, on behalf of my brother abuda he is not here so let me introduce the people those who are behind this conference as we all know we have already introduced american international education federation apart from american international education federation we have other partners those who supported us all through these days to make it a grand or mega success so i want to mention those organizations at this juncture as a token of gratitude we would like to start by saying success world one founder our eminence hrh queen nadia rajari ma'am our excellency the moment we have asked her support for this program really with a blessing gesture she has approved our request to be part of this mega program really she is a visionary mother she has do, she has been doing a great service to the humanity on behalf of success world one she has been conducting online classes with the eminent uh, people but the free it's a free coaching free for all the people those who ever attend those uh, conferences or meetings so really wonderful service is being done through success world one so we would like to thank the mother a great visionary hrh queen nadia hari hari ma'am for be, being a part of this wonderful program thank you ma'am thank you so much now we take this opportunity to thank uh, queen international ambassador dr elizabeth lucas ma'am really she has been there with us ever since we started this international journey she is the director and founder of yes you can international she motivates everyone with a, a single phrase yes you can really she has been doing a great service to youngsters especially to give them a great motivation through her as international organization wherever there is a conference a conference regarding youth a conference regarding motivation we can see the presence of a blessed queen dr elizabeth lucas ma'am thank you ma'am thank you so much for uh, being a part of this organi- uh, being a part of this conference really it's a blessing for us thank you thank you so much to our elizabeth lucas ma'am next we want to thank dr apnita chechena ma'am from thailand bangkok she is really amazing she conducts wonderful programs and uh, really it's very happy and uh, we are really blessed with her presence she is with us she is going to speak so once again we want to thank uh, apnita dr apni ambassador dr apnita chechena ma'am from bangkok for your wonderful presence in this program ma'am now i want to thank uh, one more our partner her eminence dr bodepudi chaleja ma'am who is the director of shamala hospitals in telangana state india she is also one of the pa- one of the partner to this uh, conference so we thank her excellency for extending her support to conducting this program and uh, we want to thank one more honorable excellency ambassador dr deepthi r badodaria ma'am she is the vice chancellor of konipa council and also the founder of some uh, well known organizations so we thank her excellency for being a part of this wonderful conference and we also thank the chief guest of today program dr safa alhardia ma'am from paris france for being a part of this program thank you ma'am thank you for your wonderful support and uh, we also thank uh, Uh, her eminence dr evangelia vasiloku ma'am she is a uh, international speaker she is from greece for extending her wonderful support to conduct this conference as a token of gratitude we play the uh, s- small av 
is a token of gratitude for them. Please. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. I request all the guests make sure your screen screen name should display your name. That's the first thing. And second thing is you have to mute your mic because when speakers are speaking, if you disturb them, it is going to be a chaos. I request all the members please mute your mic. If you are roaming here and there, kindly stop your display. Okay. So please maintain some protocol. I request you so. Now, I will give this time to chairperson of this conference, Dr. Vijay E. Carden, ma'am, to give a welcome speech as well as to invite the chief guest of this program. So, now, our chairperson of this conference, Dr. Vijay Karlinam, will lead the program. Please, ma'am. I am Dr. Vijay Karlin, Professor, Counseling Psychologist, Chairman of the Life Foundation. Greetings to all. It's a great evening where we all gather. We are seeing eminent personalities, excellencies, and we see the guest speakers, eminent speakers, youth leaders, entrepreneurs, and all the eminent personalities of the world. It's a great platform where we all united and we are representing our country to look at the barriers, which affecting the growth, especially the present agenda is the need of the hour during this pandemic, addressing the unemployment. Let us all united for the benefit of the society of every nation. Objectives of the conference are finding solution, solutions for youth employment, creation of job opportunities, and addressing the barrier. These are the objectives. I'm confident every speaker is going to address the problem where we are going to speak about 
the unemployment. And here we have observed many eminent speakers, CEOs, entrepreneurs, youth leaders who can solve the problem. And here my request is not simply addressing the problem, delivering some speech, giving an excellent message and moving away. Here I would like to request all the eminent excellencies, eminent speakers, CEOs, entrepreneurs, everyone who gathered here to join with us and move ahead solving every problem and breaking up the barriers of the unemployment. So let us join together and work for the benefit of the society. Here, our topic is addressing the unemployment. Over the next decades, the World Bank statements, one billion young people are going to step into the job. How many members are placed? Only half of the people are going to place, they will be in the job market. And what about the rest of the people, the youth? they will not be placed. So there are no proper job opportunities. Every nation when we look at, the developed countries are able to place them comfortably, but especially developing countries like India, the job opportunities are very less. And if we do not address this problem where youth are not placed comfortably, there will be a great unrest. There will be a distress, disaster. They move to the negativity and create a kind of unrest that make their nation fragile. So it has to be addressed. Especially developing country like India. Here yeah, we are marching ahead, but we are looking at the problem the government is also trying to solve the problem at their level, but this pandemic again thrown back. We moved decades back. There is, there is a recession period and many of the youth are in unrest. And the youth who are placed already, they lost their job during this pandemic. So this is the need of the hour. It has to be addressed. This is a time to think about the unemployment. The youth, if they are unrest, I said, there will be a disaster. Here, when we look at India, there are many reasons, especially inventions, technology. So development of science and technology is very important. There are many innovative inventions has taken place on this earth. So this is also one reason, because of the technology, many are thrown out, they use the technology. Of course, we have to march ahead. We had to look at the uh, technology. We had to take the uh, benefit of the advancement of the science, but in certain areas they're thrown out. So, and because of the globalization, so many of the youth are not placed comfortably. And we say industrialization. India is marching ahead towards the industrialization, but it is not up to the mark. So many of the youth are not placed comfortably. And if we look at India, the problem is about the caste system. This has to be addressed. Only certain caste will be given priority and they will be placed in the job and the other caste will be thrown out. And those caste will be continued generation to generation. So the deserved candidates are not placed. So this has to be addressed. We have to look at caste system. Of course, in certain uh, families, certain caste, still they're backward. They have to be encouraged. They have to be placed. And the people who are forward and were comfortably rich, they had to give the opportunity to the 
a person who is deserved. So this has to be addressed. So because of the caste system, many of their youth are not placed in their right place. And the second thing, if you see slow economic growth, there is, our India is a highly densely populated country. The economic growth is also very slow, but population is high, growth is low. Because of the slow economic growth, the rate of the economic growth is very slow. So naturally they're not placed. Many of the Indians are below poverty line. They are suffering a lot with the great economic crisis, especially this pandemic. Still they have thrown the people who are under below poverty line into the worst situation. As I run the NGO, I moved to the areas where people who are below poverty line. During this pandemic, there is no job and there is a lot of economic loss in their families and they are starving. So all these issues are making the people to suffer and the youth, they're looking at their children, their younger children to be placed comfortably, but they're not placed because of the recession and because of the slow growth, economic growth. And the next is, hi, as I said, India is densely populated. How much the population is increasing, there is no vast development in all the areas. So our Indians are not placed properly, especially our youth. So this has to be addressed. And if you look at India, is the backbone is mainly agriculture. We will be depending on agriculture. But if you look at the agriculture, the, it is a seasonal. Only during particular seasons, they get the employment. The rest of the period, they will be jobless. And this is affecting their families. Again, they starve, they suffer. And they want to educate their children. They send the children to the good schools, but they cannot afford the education. They cannot pay the fee because they're economically poor. Government is supporting, of course, the poor people who are below poverty line. They're support, supporting with the fee reimbursement. But this pandemic again affected that area and the students are facing a lot of problem. So people who want to grow, people who are from below poverty line, they want to improve the standards they're because of the recession and they are unable to improve the standards. So especially this pandemic affected the lives of many people and it is our responsibility to look at our, gen our people to be placed comfortably. If jobs are not create, are not uh, found properly, we have to create the jobs and we have to place them comfortably who are deserved for that particular position. If you see the, in India, joint family system. So here, the uh, girl child, they won't send them out. And we, uh, we knew very well in India, the girl education is not up to the mark. They don't encourage the girl child to study. And in joint family, uh, they say, I'm, we, are, we have earned much, we are rich. Where is the necessity of going out and working? So they would like to enjoy the comforts of their family status. And that also youth are not placed. And if something goes wrong in that family, they will be on the roads. And the youth do not know the gender, the people who are from this comfort family and they do not know how to survive. The present situation as a counseling psychologist, I address those problems. I've seen the families suddenly they lost their parents and the children are orphaned. They're on the roads. They do not know how to survive. All these years, they were protected by their parents and the elders of the family. They're in the comfort position. All of a sudden, everything was devastated state. They're left alone. They do not know how to survive on this earth. They were pampered much. So India, this has to be addressed. Parents should educate the children, whatever the status may, might be. They have to educate the children to live on their uh, legs. They have to be they have to survive on their own. They should not be dependent. Dignity of labor is very important. The people who are of higher middle class and rich people, they don't like to work certain jobs. 
they expect all white collar jobs. We have to motivate and educate that whatever the job they get, they have to accept. Then at least some kind of unrest will be uh, cleared. We can eradicate such feeling of unrest. So that we have to motivate our kids, our children to work and improve the standards and move ahead, climbing the ladder of success and reach to the peak. That kind of motiv motivation and education is very important. I, as a counseling psychologist, I will be observing many families and I will be in distress. When they move to abroad, they find very difficult to work on their own. So they have to, it is a need of the time that we have to educate children and they have to accept whatever the job they get. The dignity of labor is very important. They cannot look at one job very low. And it is their responsibility to climb up on their own and reach to the heights. This kind of motivation is very important for the younger generation. I've seen the family parents, they will be in a lot of distress when the children are not opting to certain job. We are, they're expecting high class job. But if you look at the profile, it is not to the standard. But the dreams are so high, nothing wrong in uh, dreaming high. Yes, they have to dream big, think big. At the same time, they have to improve their qualifications, the standards, that is very important. So this motivation is very important. Educating our kids is kids very important. This has to be observed. And if you look at the small scale industries, there, many of the industries are in a declining position. They're unable to pay the salary to their uh, employees. The laborers are thrown out and the employees are thrown out, they're on the roads. And it's highly difficult at, at this pandemic time to choose another job. So scarcity of jobs are high. So this is uh, horrible. So industries are in, unable to pay the uh, salary. And because their uh, production is also very low. So there are many problems in this way uh, as because of the slow growth of industrialization, as the labor uh, employees are not paid much. And uh, during this pandemic uh, session, if you observe especially, the most vulnerable state are teaching profession. The teachers of Indians are on the roads. Many schools are closed during this pandemic uh, state. The schools are not open as uh, teachers are asked to work from home. But this private, colleges and schools, they made their teachers only 50% online. So instead of 100, they can take up 1,000 students and teach. So many of the faculty are on the roads and many of them transformed into vendors. There are many witnesses. These are witnesses we noticed. It's very pathetic situation. The highly qualified teachers, they're turned up into vendors. Good, they opted some job instead of turning up as a waste to people and committing suicide. They're protecting their family. One way it is appreciable. But it is a responsibility of the government to look at the private sectors, what they are doing. The salaries are not paid to the uh, teaching and non-teaching staff. The families are in unrest. They're in distress state. There's a lot of chaos in the minds of the people in this pandemic state. So this is need of the time to think all those things. Being highly qualified and placed well, so we have good entrepreneurs, CEOs, excellencies, higher uh, dignitaries, and higher authority people here gathered. We are able to place them. So we all discuss how best we can accommodate them comfortably, especially the highly educated people who are not placed comfortably and they are, they are in the distress state. How odd and horrible it looks. The students, when they go to the market, they see their principals and teachers turned up into vendors. This is a situation of our country. So especially this pandemic state, this has to be addressed. And also the other problem of this unemployment is especially large number of universities is 
having number of universities, expansion of universities, schools, colleges, very important. But many of the graduates are coming out of their universities, colleges, and no jobs. And they are uh, they're so unrest, no jobs. They're staying idle. And you know, idle brains definitely turns into a devil's workshop. They will be getting diverted to other areas. So society will be disturbed. It's very important that schools and colleges, universities has to be expanded. Education is very important. Education brings all down development of the individual, but at the same time, they have to, all the educators, government, everyone responsibility to look at this, all the students has to be placed in the proper areas where they're suited. And here, many of the students who come out of the colleges and universities, they are not skilled. So it is a responsibility of us to conduct so many training sessions and uh, train up the students to be more skilled so that they can be placed comfortably or they can start their own organizations and they support themselves as well as the society and more number of students will be placed. Self-employment, we have to concentrate and train uh, students to be more skilled and look at, at the self-employment. If they're entrepreneurs, they're going to accommodate more number of people who are skilled and they can do proper placements. So like this, if we observe so many other problems here and uh, cultivable, cultivable land, if you observe uh, this also, the land, agricultural land that most of the Indians are agriculturists. So here, uh, they, their uh, fertile land is uh, less and they're unable to make the uh, use of the land and uh, improve their production. So, and proper uh, seeds uh, are no less, so they cannot improve their production and support the uh, population. So growth of the uh, population is high and production is less. And again, the people are starving. And because of the lack of the job and uh, people are suffering a lot. So if you observe in this way, uh, they, there are many problems uh, we notice and all these problems has to be addressed. I can say that these are the barriers which has to be addressed and laid the right path. So if you observe that during this uh, pandemic uh, situation, uh, we all have to uh, build a long-term solutions with the holistic approach that is very important. So whatever the solutions we have taken now, uh, uh, that uh, uh, at this present, at this juncture, whatever the solutions we think this is fine, no. We have to look at, at the long term, long run, how best we can support the younger generation, how best we can help them and place them comfortably. That is very, very important. So we have to concentrate and look at the stability of the students and the youth are very, very important. So we need to look at the bright prospects and identify viable opportunities and create sustainable change, improvements and job creation with the support of technology. Yeah, again, we need to take the support of technology. That is very important. At the same time, we have to look at the technology will not throw the uh, younger generation out, but they have to accommodate it comfortably by using technology. They have to lead very comfortable life. So this is the time where we have to concentrate and all be united together and work for the younger generation and see that we will be placed them properly and all together, let us concentrate on the long run, long term, and we uh, approach uh, them uh, and see that they will be trained properly, number of sessions we conduct, and uh, we educate and motivate uh, to accept the job which is suitable, and we encourage the students, the youth to improve their skills, especially, and they have to be skilled people. If they are skilled, they will be placed comfortably. As I'm working for an engineering college, I would like to cite one live example as when they, uh, this campus placements, during campus placements, uh, when the uh, companies move to the campus engineering colleges and they say most of the students are not skilled. They do not have proper communication skills. 
So because of the lack of communication skills, because of this lack of soft skills, because of the lack of technical skills, and they're not placed, they were not grasped in a proper uh, companies. Uh, so in MNCs, they were thrown out. And, and many of the students, uh, the youth, they, uh, their qualifications are so high. They are BTEC, MTEC, and trying for con constable jobs. So the, the, uh, uh, that job opportunities are, though they are less, we can create, we can support them if they are skillful. So it is a responsibility of us uh, to motivate them and train them to be more skilled and placed comfortably in uh, their respective areas. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, really wonderful speech, ma'am. I request all the speakers and chief guests, guests, guests of ours, delegates, uh, kindly follow the time period. That's very important. Now, our chief guests will have only 50 minutes time. Our chief guests will have 15 minutes time to speak. So we are starting with uh, a visionary leader, HRH Queen, Nadia Harihari, ma'am, founder of Successful Success World One from France. And please, we welcome you to address this panel. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can. Yes, yes, yes. yes ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. OK. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Dr. Rajao. Thank you for present. Um, thank you for inviting me. Uh, as you know, I am uh, the founder and uh, CEO of Successful One uh, uh, and uh, founder of the uh, Successful One Academy, which is also a free high quality education for everybody, uh, for all equally. I am also the founder of Successful One Mental Health Clinic, which is free also for everybody because I believe that we all need help. And um, as you know, I am ambassador at large for UN Affairs at the International Human Rights Commission, um, arbitration judge at the Federal Court of Luxembourg and Prague, and uh, oh, so many, th so many things also. Okay, so my first, um, I will say. I want to say uh, my support, give my support today to India and what they are living at the moment. It is very uh, painful to see India suffering like that. And we are all watching and we need really to be united and bring help to our brothers and sisters from India. This is really important. And I want to wish um, a Labor Day, a happy Labor Day to everybody. And this is very interesting because at the Labor Day, we are talking about unemployment. We were facing unemployment before this pandemic. We had so many problems before. And with this pandemic, it is just going worse. We are, our economy is collapsing slowly, slowly. And we are like, not really not feeling powerful face to this situation. But there's so many reasons to that because in some region, there's 70% of employment. 70% of people who are suffering have no job. And, and that it was before the pandemic. We cannot say that this pandemic is the problem of that. This is not true. This is not true because we were in this problem. And at the same time, you know what is ironic? We have so many things to build, so many things to solve. We have some villages, they have no potable water. They have no home. They have no school. They have nothing. And we can't find a job. Why not to create this job to build all that? Why not? We have some people, they don't have even toilet. They are risking their life going to the field. I'm sorry to say that, but we need to really to, to look at the situation properly. A lot of people are leaving their countries 
thinking that it is Las Vegas in other countries, that it is the El Dorado, which is not true, because also other countries, what we call the developed countries, they are also suffering and they also have no job. I can see here in France, they also have no job. A lot of people are qualified, but they can't have job. But I think the problem is coming from the education system. Why education system? Because from the beginning, we are teaching our children. We are teaching our children to be the best employees. I will explain. When they have their degree, we are encouraging them to find a company that will hire them. We are not teaching them to become a leader. We are not teaching them to be independent. We are teaching them to be the best employee. And it is the big panic when we are facing this kind of trouble where there's no job. So they start to become, to be in depression. They are, some of them even suicide. I was also touched by what happened to India with these farmers. See what happened. Because, because we are divided, because our system of education has failures. We need to reform our system of education. We need to favor more the skills. We need to favor the skills for the people because a degree, yes, a degree is important, but it's just a paper. You don't have the experience because a lot of companies, when you are going to visit them, they are just telling you, oh, you have no experience. You have no experience. So, and our children are lost. And, and in the other side, we have some, we have some pro problem also where we see the children in labor. We don't have job and we are sending our children in labor. What's wrong with us? Why we are turning around like that? Why we are turning around like that? We really need to wake up to just teach our children that don't worry, be the best expression of yourself, do your best. If you can't find a job, you will create it. There's so many things to do. We are facing problem of climate. We are facing problem of people in the street, homeless people. We are facing problem of hunger. Why? Because we are divided. We are not working in solidarity. We are not facing the real problem. Even when I see in different countries, they are very rich countries. They are very rich countries. And 80% of the population is suffering, dying, have no food to eat. They are dying of hunger. The children are in labors. What kind of human being are we? When will we wake up and see the situation face to face? When, when we will say to, to our leaders, let's focus on the essential. Let's focus on what will bring the happiness to people. Several people are dying in India. It is, what is going on in India and in different countries it is because we were not prepared. No one has taught us anything. And it is the big, um, how is it? Sorry, my English, sometimes I'm searching my, my words. You know, it's the big panic, you know? There's so many things to, to overcome all this situation of employment to favor what is agriculture. If we observe 
if we observe the nature, how the nature is working in solidarity, in solidarity, if we observe the nature, how it is working, we will never face any trouble, this kind of trouble of employment or anything because we will work united, one. And we can even build beyond sustainable development, beyond sustainable development. Today we have no job. And when you see the situation, we have so many things to build, so many things to build. We have no school. Our children have no school. I have seen in, in India, in Africa, I have even seen in, in some countries, children going in container learning. We cannot say that, I, that we are overpopulated. This is not true. If we work in solidarity, we have enough resources to live and to do. We need to favor the training centers. We need to favor the skills. We need to teach different things. You know, if you can't find a job, create it. Be the best expression of yourself. Today, the big companies, they are the only companies that, that they, they are not facing any problems because they love what they do. They have invested in everything, their energy, their love, everything. If you see the big artists, singers, footballers, they are very rich and they will always be rich. Why? Because they are doing what they love to do. We cannot say to our children, okay, I want you to become a lawyer, so you will go there. I want you to become a doctor, so you will go there. What is the will, the wish of the child? What is the wish of the child? Of course, we cannot all be businessmen or businesswomen, right? But we need, we need really to push them there toward the, the, the education. This world is suffering because we have a lack of education. We are not teaching us the right education. Our, even our politicians are lost face to, face to that. You know, let's teach them how to become a leader. It doesn't matter the job that they want to do, but to become a leader. And yes, they can do it. They can do it if they change their mind. Some of our people are blocked because since they are young, we are telling them we are poor. We are poor and we are poor. What is the real definition of poverty? Is it a fatality to be poor? No, it is not a fatality. And poverty all depends how you see poverty. Why you focus, why we focus on poverty when we have abundance everywhere around us? Because our mind is disturbed by something else. Because our mind is focused on something else. The rich will become always rich because they are focused in their riches. But the poor will be always poor because he is focused in his poverty. The employed will be always employed because he is focused in his problem. Let's change our mind. Let's see the abundance around us. Let's focus on solution and no more the troubles. Because yes, we are capable. We are more than human beings. We are spirit. We are spirit experiencing a form. We are a spirit in a body. And for a spirit, there's no limit. There's no limit. See what we have done. 
see how with technology, we are capable to go to the moon. We are capable to, to build satellites, to create satellites, and we are not even capable to create some a, a job. What's wrong with us? There's, there's a problem of balance. We need to be balanced. We need also to give the chance to the woman because the woman is here to bring this balance. The education starts from her. We need to respect her because you, we cannot speak about employment without talking about uh, uh, women, your children. We are here not only to um, empower the youth or empower the woman. We are here to empower the human. We need all empowerment. We need all job. If the woman has job, if we train the woman, if we give her the chance to work, to be also the best expression of herself, do you really think that our children will go to the labor at seven, uh, seven years old, risking their life, risking to be raped or to be, to be in human trafficking? No, we need to wake up. We need to wake up. We need to be united. Today we are lost even with one, one virus put all humanity at her knees. One small virus. Can you believe? Because we have problem of identity. We are focused on a body. We identify ourselves in our body, you know? And because of that, we have the problem of creation. We feel that we are not capable to create, but we are capable to create. We are creator. We can do it. Just link ourselves with our real identity, our real identity, which is spirit, soul, life. For life, life is abundant. Let's build our world together. Let's join hand together. Let's reform our system of education because our system has failures. Because of our system of education, we have failures in politics, in economy, in finance. See the system of finance. Before the economy was bringing the finance. Today, the finance took the power and the, the finance is generating the economy. Everything is reversed and it is our fault because we give power to what, uh, what should not have power. We give power to everything around us when we forgot that we are the power. We are the people who are creating that. So employment is solved and should be solved first by education, second to, to focus on what is essential. Actually, we need agriculture. We need to focus on agriculture. Agriculture will save the world. A lot of people are dying of hunger. I have seen farmers suicide in India. I have seen, even here in France, we have also farmers who have suicide. Why? Because they know only one thing, you know? They receive this education and they, they, have, not, they have not received the, the proper education that will tell them, okay, you failed here, but don't worry, don't worry. You are capable to do better. You are capable to, to redirect yourself to something else. You know, we are investing, we are investing a lot of money in weapons. We are investing a lot of money in weapons. Do you think that this money cannot serve to our children, our education? Do you think that jobs, some villages, to create water, 
to break to create cent uh, training centers yes we need really to focus on the essential you know and not only every education you know when i say our system of education has failures because if you see the world if you see this world it is because of educated people that we are all here in troubles. Educated people have created the weapons. Educated people have created this virus. Yes, we are not giving the chains to the real education. Our education should be an education of peace, of skills, and this is, this is why we should be really united and focused and help one another. And again, I invite all of you to join hand and to help India, to help Brazil, to help everybody. And yes, we can do it. Employment exists only here. It doesn't really exist. It is existing in your mind because you are limiting yourself. We are limiting ourselves. And this is why we, we are employed. You know, let's wake up and create what we have to create. We are spirit. We are unlimited. We have the unlimited power. And yes, we can do it all together. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Really, it's uh, amazing. As people say that you are a visionary mother, really, your vision is clearly visible on screen. As you said, uh, the empowerment of women, education, the importance of education, and third point, agriculture. These three things uh, are very important, ma'am. Really, you put uh, uh, valid points uh, to your speech. Really amazing. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to invite uh, our eminent screen ambassador, Dr. Elizabeth Lucas, ma'am. Yes, UK International founder and director. We invite our eminent screen ambassador, Dr. Elizabeth Lucas, ma'am, founder and director. Please unmute, ma'am. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, it's audible. Greetings. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Now we'll have a Josh. Okay. Motivational speaker. Thank you. Okay. Good day, wonderful people. All protocol observed. Let me say, let me just seize this opportunity to express my gratitude to the founder and president of this organization, America International Education Federation, and the honorable partners and the distinguished organizers of this great conference and to include our wonderful moderator. I'm grateful and thank you. Uh, thank you for these congratulations on this uh, event, for putting it together. And I also want to recognize all our excellency, our honorables and the guest speakers you are all welcome. Topic before us today is addressing unemployment. Wow. But before we go to the unemployment, let me first of all say employment is the opportunity of being paid to work for any organization or government. Employment is the hope of every scholar after completion of their studies. It is also the hope of every man, every woman to be able to feed and also to provide for their family. Employment is the growth of, of economy in every country. But unfortunately, the level of unemployment is getting high and beyond control and it's affecting lives, families, economy, and the nation. 
And you can also believe with me that that is exactly what is affecting even some countries now during this pandemic, because there's not enough fund to support them. Look at what is going on in India. If I have all everything that, that takes, I can ship everything and send it to India right now. But it's not possible because some of us, we are, we are either not working or we are being paid low. Imagine someone worked hard to complete their school only to end up staying at home for six months, one year, and even many years jobless, unemployed, nothing to receive at the end of the month, frustrated, not be able to provide for the family, tension increasing that leads to violence, depression, and mental health. No job security, no long-term job guarantee anymore. Many people depend on the government to provide job for all and the population is increasing. Some companies and organizations went into administration and cannot afford to sustain the employee, not to talk of employ workers. And the, and, have to be, and the workers has to be laid off. What a sad situation. But however, no condition is permanent. My name is Dr. Elizabeth Lucas from United Kingdom, inspirational speaker, author and mentor, CEO of Yes, You Can International. So let me continue with this moment of truth. It is the fact that getting a job doesn't guarantee security and long-term employment. The condition is changing every day. Youths are most affected because they, their system keeps changing. No job after school and unemployment is increasing crime because they have nothing to do. Private and corporate organizations face different and new challenges every day, which might not sustain them. Rat race. We allow people rush to a certain job and career, which might not accommodate everyone. And people don't realize Another way to get a, and to create a job 